Welcome back to the Triple M Personal Finance Show. It is hard to believe that we've made it to episode six already. And for this, we really have to thank our producer, who is my son, because he's the one really, really like driving this show. He does all the work in editing. He makes music. I've been noticing he makes like different music for each intro. And I'm especially thankful that he is so bossy to me, because if I wait more than a few days or a week before making a new show, he's right at my throat, like, Dad, where's your new episode? People are going to forget about your show. It's never going to grow. And that's true. Like, I, I often act way too much like a retired guy when it comes to my blogging hobby or to anything else relating to, like, uh, online stuff, because I'm such a more real world, a real world person. But this stuff has benefits. So thank you, my son. And um, it's also his 13th birthday today as I record this, so everybody should give him a hand of applause for being a teenager now and going to the next level even more amazingly. So thanks a lot, dude. So the theme of today's episode is another response to a bunch of reader questions. Um, and you could sum it up with the words, should I fire my financial advisor or should I hire one in the first place? Um, it's because I get a lot of questions like this one. Dear Triple M, my parents taught me to save since I was young, and my Uncle Vinny is a financial advisor with one of the big name firms. You know, the ones that go door to door and try to make relationships with the customers. Um, so he manages my parents' num money, and they just signed me up at the same time when I was 18 years old. But now I hear you talking about how important investing fees are. So is this type of financial advisor a good place to leave my money? So this is a super common question because finance and investing is really confusing to most people. And because of this, a huge industry has sprung up around it. And sometimes this industry really does help people, but other times it's just there to liberate the people from their money. And that's what we're going to get into in this episode. Now, the, th the key thing to remember is that financial advisors come in at least three different types, and they all call themselves financial advisors. First of all, you got your investment salespeople who are really trying to sell mutual funds in order to get a commission on selling as many mutual funds as possible to you. And then you got your insurance salespeople, maybe some overlap with those investment salespeople, but they're trying to sell you insurance products and then they get a commission on those things. And then finally, there's the real kind of financial advisor, which is just a expert at all aspects of a person's finances and they're gonna understand things like taxes and life goals and investments. And their goal is to put you into the best thing for you and they will not be getting a commission on anything they sell you because commissions tend to distort the incentives. And if you think about it, um, certain, certain funds, if they charge higher fees, they can then kick those ones back to the advisors and they're gonna be costing you more in order to line the advisor's pockets. So uh, that's a big part of the industry that that I'm going to teach you, hopefully in this episode, how to avoid. So the reason you want to avoid these salespeople is what they're really selling you is a dream. And that dream is that their particular mutual fund or, or investment strategy is going to be better than the market in general. They don't want you to know that buying the stock market is really the best, uh, buying an index fund of the stock market is really the best approach. And uh, that's the way the stock market really works is sort of like this. It's like uh, a fish tank, pardon my low-tech special effects, but if you imagine a fish tank and there's all these little fish swimming around rapidly, multicolored fish, and collectively they're part of what we call the stock market. And it's always rising, always rising slowly. Sometimes it goes down, but if you look at it over a multi-decade period, the stock market always goes up. So then when you have individual actively managed mutual funds or investment advisors who place bets on individual stocks, what they're doing is standing here and they're looking in and they're like, I think the... Uh, the orange fish and the blue fish are going to be outperforming the other fish. They're going to eat more fish than the other ones over the next 10 years because of blah, 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 economy, politics. And then there's another investment advisor standing over here like, no, no, I think it's going to be the purple fish and the green fish. Now watch, watch their outperformance because of these other factors in South America and North Korea. So they all spout these opinions. But what's really happening is the fish are just randomly swimming around, collectively rising, and you can place your bets with this advisor or place your bets with this one, your results are going to be random, except for they're going to charge you a fee for the privilege. So sometimes one person might outperform through sheer luck. Another person might outperform or underperform sure, through sheer luck. When you put all of these investment advisors together, what you get is the average of the market. 
And the best you can do is meet the average and minus the fees that you're paying. So if you think about the math behind all of this, the best thing you can do is own the entire fish tank and pay virtually no fees, which is what you get in an index fund. If you think about the different amount of fees that people are paying here, a lot of these advisors are charging 1% or even 1.5 or 2% of your money every year over and over again in order for you to purchase their amazing expertise. Um, if you buy an index fund, you're paying closer to 0.1% or even half of that. So advisors are charging you between 10 or 20 or even 50 times more than the fees you're paying with an index fund. So you can imagine which is going to lead to the best results over time. All right, so with all the stock market basics and index fund understanding under our belts a little bit, the natural question is, what should I do? What should you do? Is it an emergency to get out from these expensive things like American funds or Edward Jones management kind of stuff? Um, it's probably not an emergency. It's just a good call to action to look at what you have right now. Most people ignore what they have and just let it go for decades. But log into your accounts or talk to your advisor and find out exactly what you're invested in and really what the fees are on an annual basis and understand what they're charging you and compare it to what you could get at a place like Vanguard or Betterment or whatever where the fees are a fraction of a percent, like way less than 0.5% per year because over a multi-decade period, this is going to make a difference of hundreds of thousands of dollars of how much money you end up with when you're older. And if you don't like what you see, it's really not that hard to roll over. You can do 401k or IRA rollovers, and they do most of the work for you. You basically make a couple of phone calls, and then your money switches over to a new account where you're going to get higher returns for life. And even if you need hand-holding and advice, like an investment advisor, most of these firms, including Vanguard, offer this um, either like on an automated basis, or you can pay a little bit more for uh, personalized advice and they'll even advise you on like should I invest for my, my child's university education or whatever. But the bottom line is it's not a lot of work to advise a person on their finances. It's a few hours of work per year for an expert to help you with this and thus you should only be paying a few hundred dollars per year for that type of advice because otherwise what are you paying them for? So um, I know this is very vague advice, very, very general, because uh, everyone has a different situation. But if you have a few interesting questions, specific ones, you can put them below here in the comments. And myself and other people can maybe try to answer them a little bit more. And you, you can see where we are all collectively and who's, what situations we're running into. And maybe we can clean up some of this mystery around investing for retirement. <laughs>